Hello and welcome to the first part of procedural stairs. To start with, we're going to create a curve. First, we need the geometry network or sub level to create this curve. So now we have a curve node. So with this curve node, we can draw a curve in the viewport. Before we can do this, we need to also enable this handler. And now we should be able to then draw a curve like this. Now, I want to have a little bit more structure in my curve. So I'm going to make sure it's a little bit aligned on the grid. So in here, I'm going to enable the snapping option for grids. You can also hold X to get the snapping options if you want to have a quick shortcut for this. So then I will be going from here to here, something like this. When you're happy with the curve, you're going to press enter. You can always start tweaking the curve where it goes afterwards. And if you want to add more points on the curve, you have to hold shift. And when you click holding shift, you can see that you will can draw another line. So holding shift will make sure you can draw more lines. Now, as I want to create a stairs, this needs to be higher. So we can decide the angle of the stairs. Then what we could do is we could resample the curve. So resample will create extra points on the curve. So right now we don't see anything because we have not enabled display points. So we can display the points and now we can see all the points that are being created. And then based on this number, it will create points. So the space between each point is 0 0.1. So if we increase this value, you can see that we increase the spacing. I don't need that many points. So let's, I'm going to use this value. So we have just a couple of points. And then what I would like to do is at the beginning and at the start, I want this to be sort of flat. So what I'm going to do is I will ask the bounds from my curve. And then in the bounds, we're going to play around with some of the padding options. So if you hold the middle mouse button, we can, for example, as you can see, we can increase values. What I'm mainly interested in here is then lowering this value. So I'm going to take 0.2 and also here 0.2. So these are then the parts that will be moved. So then with a ray node, I'm actually going to fit the curve in the space. So in this ray node, what, what I'm going to do is here in method, I'm going to say minimum distance. So the points will go to the minimum distance of the second input. So and this will create then this shape where the end and the beginning is now flat. So even if I like move my line, you can see it sort of like keeps the end and the beginning flat. So this is the main idea of these nodes is to create a flat beginning and a flat end. Now to clean up this shape a bit more, I'm going to use a group range. And in this group range, I will be selecting the first points. So first of all, I want to select points. So in here, I will go to type points. And we can select, for example, the start points and the end points, as you can see here. But I actually want to put them on two and two. So these two points are the ones I actually would like to keep. So with a blast node, I will be deleting these points that are in this group. So we have cleaned up the shape a little bit to make sure that these and these are always perfect, perfectly straight connected to each other. Then I want to use the sweep node. And with the sweep node, we can then uh, sweep a shape along this line. So we can use, for example, the built-in features like a tube or a square. You can see here. But I'm actually interested in using a custom shape. So I will leave it on second input. So I'm going to make a shape here as input and I will be using a curve node here as well. So curve. Then I will go in here 
to the front view. And I'm also going to enable grid snapping again. So I have a, some control in where to start with the lines. Something like this. You press enter. So I have this shape. We can also close it if you would like to close the shape. And I will also use a symmetry on the shape. So lapse symmetry. And I will be doing in this direction. And we can plug this in the shape here. And we should have then this result. So now it's actually facing in the wrong direction. And let's go here to the construction tab and then move the up vector to the y axis, of course. So it's always facing in the y axis. If you're not happy too much with the curve results, you can always adjust it afterwards with an edit node and we can then tweak it a little bit. The, the shape isn't what you were looking for. Then we can then, then we can tweak this shape a bit. What we could also, for example, do here is bevel a certain point. So we can use the poly bevel and we can use the point feature. So we can go in here in points. Then we can select the points here. Let's say selecting these three points, then press enter. Now these points are selected and then we can start beveling them as you can see. And then we can do something like this make them nice and round and I can go here and then press 2 and go in point selection then we could select these points and we could for example scale them a bit inwards like this to get some more variation so notice that there is a small issue here but don't worry too much about that then one more thing I would like to do here as well is to remove the line in the middle Either we can use here the dissolve flatten edges, which should get rid of the middle line. So when we copy the shape now, there is no line in the middle here as well. So then we have this shape for our stairs. And I think it should actually be more like this. And maybe these should be higher. So we can easily tweak some of these values and later on I will add a small procedural system here that controls some of these points so we can also tweak some of the width and the height of these. Then here it might be useful if there is actually a little bevel on these points. So we can also here put a bevel on the points, make sure we set it to points and we don't necessarily have to select points, it should work automatically as you could see it works automatically without having any specific selections so it would round off these parts then we can put this in here then it will have some better transition if you were looking for this you might have some issues here so you could solve this by just for example placing a transform here and then moving your shape up or down and then you can see it's getting better. That's a quick fix for that issue. So then we have this base setup. Also in the sweep, we can also generate UVs. So if you click compute UVs, you have then automatically created UVs for this geometry. Later on, I will talk more about UV and how we could use a trim sheet to use procedural unwrapping on it. But for now, I'm going to focus on the geometry. I would like to close off these endings. So we can go in here in the sweep and then end caps, for example. Like we can do a single polygon. So that is possible. You can also do something like this. So it's a grid shape and it would try to reconstruct it further. So there are multiple options here to close this gap. But I will actually do another option because later on when I build my procedural UV system it will come in better. So I will use a polyfill and in this polyfill 
I will set it here as filling mode single polygon so it only fills single polygons where it needs to be and I would like to save this information in the group then this group can then be used in the bevel so I can use the poly bevel here again and I can fill in the patch group so if you would now increase then the distance we can see now that we can bevel this parts specifically so then we have a better transition to the ending so this is then already the first system we can build in some more tweaks if you want to like in here we could create a system that creates more spacing on these parts so i will be using a range node again and we're going to select the beginning and the end of the points so beginning and end so we have selected them you can also invert it if you want to so begin and end points then in a transform i will be using this information but i also want to make sure the pivot of my transform is sort of in the middle if you have been following other tutorials about the sci-fi series you might know this part so i built in a node called center and in here we filled in this piece of code to make sure our pivot is always in the center so if you use this information it will automatically store the pivot in the middle so of course this is for the x-axis then for the y-axis we have then y and then for the z-axis we have then z so if you fill this in you have then the correct pivot in the middle so as you can see pivot is now in the middle of the line so we can fill in then my beginning and end group so if i would change the scale here we can play around with this scale we can also in here press an explanation mark and it will reverse the group in, instead of changing the slope part it will create it will scale up these parts so based on what you would like to have we can then tweak that so i can fill this in here and use this further here so we can have a more beginning and an end then the next part i will be creating some of the stair steps so we'll first be modeling them and I will also use a curve and the sweep nodes. So first of all, curve node. I will go to the top view and let's draw a curve. So it could look something like this. Then also again, I want to symmetrize this. On the other side. Then we could also do a bevel so you can bevel the, the points and we can so the transition will be less harsh when we sweep a shape on this so like i mentioned i want to sweep a shape on this and i'm gonna build a custom shape so curve note again and I will go back here in then a front view and let's draw a shape. So in my case, it's also automatically closed. Doesn't have to be the same. I might change it afterwards. So I'm, I'm going to place the, this in the sweep and then we have a result automatically. And again, we have to go here to construction and set this to the Y axis. So we can see that it sweeped around. I might place a transform here so we can tweak the position. So after a couple of tweaks, I ended up with this, with this shape. So what I did is I placed an edit here and I 
fine-tuned the shape a bit more so we have more spacing in the middle here and these side ones are smaller then also here in the bevel i beveled these two edges not this middle one just because it gave me a better result so this is then the result i end up with as uh, one of my steps for the stairs so then i know i'm going to calculate how many of them i want so i go back here to my base line and i'm going to convert this line and what this is doing is it will convert each line into a primitive so if you look here we have one primitive primitive zero if we convert the line that means we will have now three primitives so each line between points is now its own primitive so the primitive i'm actually interested in is called number one so we can then use a blast node we can then fill in group one and then revert non-selected so we have this line then what we have to do is resample the line so we'll create points for us to copy on the model and i'm going to tweak the resampling amount so we have enough points but not too much and then we can use a copy to points and let's see how that is doing so copy to points so now we have created these stairs then What's also interesting to know is that in Houdini 18 there is also a copy to curves. So if you have a much more complex curve as input, you might need to use the copy to curves. And also in the copy to curves we can set the up vector to then the y-axis. And now it perfectly follows the curve. So if you were looking for this result, this works way better on curves. So I can definitely recommend this node if you want to copy models on curves but as we are creating a simple stairs the copy to points uh, will also do a nice job of just copying this on the curve so then we can already start merging these results and now we have our base setup so it definitely would need some more tweaks and i will just use a transform so we can move this forward so we can move this piece forward and let's scale it for now so then quickly testing the tool so if i adjust my line so we can easily see that it adjusts automatically to where i would like to have my stairs so the system is also built for now for one one line so we could draw more lines but as you can see it's not really working with multiple lines. It's specifically built now for this one line to have a simple stairs to we can quickly build around the level. Then next part, I'm going to build a handle for the stairs. And I'm going to create some more space in here because we also want to have information from the curve. Then I actually want to start from this blast node here from this straight line and i want to sweep from this and i want to use a line as input and i want to adjust this line and i want to adjust the line like this and i want to axis align this so it's in the middle and then also here i'm going to place transform and the transform will come in handy if i for example want to move it up higher or want to adjust the position where it is so we can easily with a transform fine-tune where i should have my handle also with this line we then control the length so later on we will have a global length parameter so we can decide the length of the total stairs so now i'm gonna eyeball the length and I think it should be around here. So it's around here on the side. And then I'm going to use the add node. 
and in this add node I will be deleting all geometry but keep the points so now if I enable the points you should clearly see we have now the four points and if you go to polygon we can connect these four points based on the group here so right now it's just going to connect them based on the numbers so from 0 to 1 from 1 to 2 and to 3 but I want to go with for example you can we use groups of endpoints so we will connect 0 to 1 and from 2 to 3 and so on but we can also then use the skip one and then it will skip so it goes from 0 to 2 instead of 0 to 1 and this is then actually the result that I want to because this result I can now use an extrude node on and instead of using the default extrusion options I'm going to use the front transform so I enable this so I enable this and then I can drag this so I have now created the side bars for where I want my handle then this result I'm going to use the convert line here again and with this convert line I'm going to delete some of the primitives so 0 and 2 needs to be deleted so blast so 0 and space 2 so these are now deleted then we could already start sweeping this result so if you use the sweep node and let's use the round tube sweep the result as you can see there's also one problem here is that these parts are not connected anymore as you can see so we need to convert these back to one primitive again so we can use a poly pad and this node will convert everything back to one primitive as you can see so we went from multiple primitives two with the polypad with one primitive so now this should be connected here again then to make this a bit more nicer you're gonna of course bevel these points so we have a nice round edge there so make sure it's set to points and then increase so now we have this nice round handle so maybe eight was too much and we can also play around here with the topology on how much you would like to spend on this edge so maybe a bit more here and then merge this here and let's see if this is placed well and it is definitely placed on the correct position but maybe the size of it needs to be tweaked so here in the extrude I can decide how high it should be so if you want to have just a low handle you can place it here and if you want to then tweak the radius we can go back here in the sweep node and then start making it a little bit thinner so it fits a bit better with the scale so now we have a handle so if people need to grab the handle you can have that also so that was it for the first part we made a procedural system for the stairs and now we can draw our own stairs so next part will be creating a digital asset so we can then use these stairs in game engine